Um, as you can see over there on the fake urine, uh, we can measure the volume. Minimum volume should be about 30 cc's an hour, okay, or about a cup every eight hours. Most of us produce more than that. Um, color, that has to do with concentration. So um, very, very pale urine is going to not have a high volume, typically, uh, whereas very dark urine is going to have a low volume, all right? And the bilirubin here is, uh, shouldn't have bilirubin because that's a protein and it shouldn't have that in there. Um, but with the urea and components, we have an increase in concentration as we decrease volume. Um, so turbidity has to do with cloudiness. You can see in the tube on the left, they're almost the same color, but in the tube on the left, you can't see the graph lines, and the tube on the right, you can't, all right? So high turbidity is less transparent. That can be from an infection, from bacteria or pus, um, usually from the bladder, not usually from the kidney. Um, and smell. So some people, not everybody, uh, produce an enzyme that breaks asparagus down and creates an odor that shows up in your urine in about 15 minutes. It doesn't take very long um, to get from the digestive system to the, to the kidneys. Not everybody does that, all right? But just urine itself, an exposure to the air can form more ammonia. And that's that, you know, pee smell that you get from animals or baby diapers or whatever um, that um, can add to the, to the urine odor. We have feral cats. So especially after it's rained or it's cold, you walk through the court, um, courtyard around our biology offices and it smells like, well it is, cat pee. And we kind of have this constant battle with other people on the campus that collect money and buy food for the cats. And you'd think as a biology department, we would support the feral cats. Only one of our faculty members got sprayed by a skunk who came in and so we have increased animals eating the cat food. And so that progressive of, you know, attracting other wild animals and just cats can, can be an issue. pH. pH is due to hydrogen ions, all right? And typically urine is on the acidic side. It can get as low as five. It's usually between five and 6.6, .6, although it can get alkaline, it's usually acidic. Um, and this is because it's a way of the body getting rid of, as we'll see in the next, or last class period for this unit, of controlling pH. And we have actually several buffers in the urine to allow additional hydrogen ions to be secreted and not make your urine a pH of one or two, which it would really, really burn, okay? So those buffers allow it to kind of soak up additional hydrogen ions. Specific gravity. This is a ratio between density and volume. So it's water, distilled water that doesn't have minerals in it, it has a specific gravity of what? Meaning there's one mil of water weighs one gram. You start adding salts or other components to it, it's going to become heavier without gaining as much volume. And so um, seawater, water from the sink, um, has minerals in it, and certainly our urine is going to have a higher specific gravity than what? So here's the range, 1.003, water's going to be 1.0000 if it's distilled. So 1.003 is a lower specific gravity than 1.03. Remember I said if you have a dark urine concentrated, it sinks to the bottom of the bowl? That's because it has a higher specific gravity, all right? That's why when you swim in the ocean, it's easier to float than in a lake because of the increased amount of salt particles provide that. So this equipment here is called a hydrometer, measuring water, okay? And there's a measured weight at the bottom. The more dense the fluid is, the higher up this will float. So when we look at it, and I set some up here um, for you to visualize, when we look at this range, it's set up, so the first one that you see is 1.000. And then the next mark says a 10, that's not 1.1, that's equal to 1.010, okay? The next mark is a 20, and that would be equal to 1.020. 
So if we're halfway in between here, that would be 1.005. Halfway in between here would be 1.015 on our way to 1.020, all right? So the more ABH that your body is using, the higher the specific gravity is going to go because we're losing water or even aldosterone. We're making the uh, filtrate more concentrated. Um, a few years ago when I was you know, probably 10, I was teaching this class at Sac State and students actually um, drank <clears throat> sodas or distilled water. We even allowed them to go off campus and drink alcohol and then come in and see the effect. Um, they just couldn't do it on campus. And um, so they would go to the bathroom down the hall and go to the bathroom and come back and bring their own urine and test specific gravity and volume and all of that. All right? So what, and then let's see what the changes were as far as concentration and volume and all of that as it um, went through the components. So one of my students came back. She had a young daughter, and she said, my little girl is now the urine police at her nursery school. And I said, what do you mean? She says, she follows everybody into the bathroom and looks at their urine and tells them whether they need to drink more water or not. <laughs> oh my God. Obviously the mother had shared, so I had to talk to the daughter. So when you read a meniscus, now on your urine dipsticks, it's going to have a place there where, for you to read the specific gravity. But I put up some sample containers there that I want you to take a look at. You guys know what a meniscus is? You've had chemistry, all right? So when we read something that's in a glass jar like this, surface tension, we've talked about that a bit. So surface tension is gonna pull the fluid up the sides of the container, okay? And you're gonna read it at the lowest level of this dip. You don't wanna read that, you wanna read it at that level, okay? Now it's hard to see, Protein, by the way, makes urine foamy. Um, so um, sometimes a little bit of extra foam in there makes that difficult. So what I, um, what we're going to do, and like I said, this doesn't take um, a very long time, is we have dipsticks, okay? So the lab activity for this that I'm writing up now, to check the pictures and posted them up, putting them together. So you want to take, you have four different solutions that have different amounts of blood or ketones or protein or whatever, and put four different test tubes in here. There's a Sharpie to mark one, two, three, and four, all right? And there's alcohol swabs over there, so when you whisk them out, this is not real urine, so it can go down the sink. Uh, when you mark them, do you use the alcohol to clean off the marks before you before you put them in the bin there? Okay, and then over here, I separated the four different solutions, um, and they're marked one and two, and over there are three and four. So put a about two thirds of the test tube. You could probably put a little bit more in because. to be aware, okay, of the effect. So these, these um, dipsticks have eight factors, and the way you, let's tell me before I drop it. So the way you test it is the long area that doesn't have any um, colored square on it is where you hold it, and then you're gonna read the color um, at the top of the arrowhead, so the first thing is LEU, that stands for leukocytes. So that's what you're gonna read first, after you hold it onto this handle. So you're gonna dip it in that, wait 30 to 60 seconds, and then 
I would take a picture of it, okay? Because for this particular lab write-up, I took a picture of all four, one of each. And so, and then I have it matched up to an image of this. So I'm gonna say, was this solution one or two or three or four? Another question, is it high in blood? Is it high in ketones or whatever? So you're gonna dip it in. Tap it so it's not soaking wet. Wait at least 30 to 40 seconds and then read across whatever value is that matches the color, okay? So on here um, are leukocytes, which would be indicative of an infection. Um, nitrates, which are as well, that's a production and excretion of bacteria. Proteins, which you shouldn't see. If they're present, that means some kind of damage to the filtration membrane. pH, so you don't, oh, we don't need to have a separate stitch of thing. Blood. SG stands for specific gravity. So you don't have to read it, but I want you to take a look at that um, so you get an idea. Ketones, which are a byproduct of breaking down fats. If you've ever read or heard about the ketone diet, you can buy special sticks for this, although blood is for accurate, and then finally glucose. So um, blood shouldn't be there, ketones shouldn't be there unless you're on a keto diet. Glucose shouldn't be there. So a lot of these are structured things that can, should not be in there. All right, and they have been some of them have been added to give you something to look at. So it's not all normal. So I would take these out. Um, you might want to get a piece of paper, or um, you can probably see it on your desk. But I would get a paper towel so you're not putting a fake urine actually on your desk. Okay. Um, you can line them all up one, two, three, four, or take a picture separately. Just make sure everybody has an image of this and keeps track of which solution once you three, four, went with. You can answer questions about it on the back of the board. Okay?